Texture Time, Section 2. This is the moss stitch version only, and here we have all those long yarn tails. We're going to pick up and knit 98 stitches along the left selvage of Section 1. Use your main color to begin picking up stitches. This is the moss stitch version only. Pick up and knit 3 stitches from the I-cord edge. Continue to pick up and knit 98 stitches. Dive through both legs of each selvage stitch while you pick up stitches. And here I am picking up stitches, throwing the yarn in my right hand. Here I am at the end of the 98 stitch pickup. And once you've picked up 98 stitches, pick up one more final stitch. This can be any strand of yarn that you can pick up and knit towards that cast on edge of section 1. There should be 102 total stitches. Skip ahead in this video to braid setup row wrong side. Here is the completed section 1 of the brioche version. We have those three live stitches placed on a stitch marker or a piece of waste yarn. We're going to pick up stitches from the left edge of section 1. With right side facing, and with main color, we're going to pick up and knit three stitches from this I-cord edge. You can get any three strands of yarn, pick up and knit three from this I-cord edge. Now we're going to pick up and knit one, make one, 49 times along this selvage. Pick up and knit one by going through both strands of the stitch. Make one using a backwards loop cast on. Pick up and knit each selvage stitch and make one. If you're holding the yarn in your right hand, give that yarn a twist for the make one increase. It doesn't matter which direction you twist it, just make sure you get that backwards loop cast on for the make one stitch. Make one, and knit the next selvage stitch. I just worked the pick up and knit one, make one 49 times. Now we're going to pick up and knit one final stitch. You can get any strand of yarn there at the bottom to have 102 total stitches. Turn to work the wrong side with main color and choose your favorite contrast color. I'm going with contrast color one because they have a really nice high contrast for this technique we're going to use. Try a little twist test like this to see which contrast color you prefer with your main color. Only choose between contrast colors 1, 2, or 3. Do not use contrast color 4 for this next row. I'm going to go with contrast color 1 for the high contrast. Using main color, pick up and knit two stitches from the cast on edge of section one. And this row applies to both versions, no matter if you knit the moss stitch or the brioche. Pick up and knit two stitches on the wrong side and get them on your right needle. Knit one. Bring the yarn forward to purl one with main color. 
and now we're going to purl one with contrast color. Do this seven times. Purl one with main color. Purl one with contrast color. The yarns are always in front for this row. Purl one with main color and purl one with the contrast color. Let the yarns float in front. Don't hold them too tight or too loose. Just let them cross in front as you purl one with the main color. And purl one with the contrast color seven times. I just finished the purl one with main color, purl one with contrast color seven times. Now we're going to make one with the main color with the backwards loop cast on, purl one with the contrast color. We'll do that ten times. Make one with main color, purl one with contrast color. Do the backwards loop cast on to make one with main color, purl one with contrast color. 10 times. Here I am at the end of the braid setup row. Follow this row very carefully with all those make ones. And now we're going to end by purling one with contrast color and slip the last three stitches with yarns in front. There should be 134 total stitches. Braid row 1. Knit 3 with the main color. Now bring the main color and the contrast color in front. Purl 1 with the contrast color. Place the contrast color to the right on top of main color as it purls 1. Now place the main color on top, purl one with the contrast color. And the main and the contrast goes to the right as you purl. So the color you just used always goes on top, purling every stitch across this row. Purl one with main color, put it on top, contrast color purls one. Place the contrast on top, purl one with the main color, all the way across the row. As you reach the end of the row, we will end by purling one with the contrast color, place it on top to purl one with the main color, and slip the last three stitches with yarn in front. After this row, the yarns will be quite twisty as they twisted around each other after each stitch, but they will untwist in the next row. If this really bothers you, you can also try breaking the yarn, leaving three meter long lengths. If you want to leave three meters or three yards of length, um, you can break your yarn so that they don't tangle as much. But braid row two on the wrong side will untwist the yarns. Braid row two wrong side. Using main color, knit four stitches. Now knit one with the contrast color. Place contrast color to the right on top of the main color as the main color knits one. Place the main color on top to the right and the contrast color knit one. Place it on top, main color knit one. 
place the main color on top, contrast knit one. Place contrast on top, main color knit one. All the way across the row, this will untwist the yarns by the end of the row. Here I am reaching the end of braid row two. Once you reach the last four stitches, knit one with the contrast color, bring both yarns in front to slip the last three stitches with yarn in front. Break the main color and contrast color. And here is the finished braid. Moving on to squiggles, row one right side. Using contrast color four, knit to last three stitches. This is the opportunity for your fuzzy contrast color four to really shine. But if you're not using a fuzzy yarn for contrast color four, it will also have a really lovely accent. Here are rows 1 through 12 of the squiggles, finished with all those short row turns. Keep contrast color 4 attached, so don't break that contrast color 4. We're going to work another braid, starting with row 1 on the right side. Grab your main color. Knit two, slip, slip, knit, slip knitwise, slip knitwise, knit them together through the back. Knit nine, now we're going to knit one, make one, eleven times. Knit one, Make one with the backwards loop cast on 11 times. After working the knit one, make one 11 total times, we're going to knit five. You should now be at a short row gap. We're going to knit one together with a picked up stitch to close the gap. Using the left needle, Dive in to pick up the garter bump below the stitch you just knit, and knit it together with the next stitch to close the gap. Knit two together ten times. Here is that tenth knit two together. You should now be at another short row gap. After knitting two together ten times, pick up that garter bump below the stitch you just worked and knit it together with the next stitch to close the gap. Continue working across this row 
closing all the gaps as you come to them. And you should have 134 stitches at the end of row 1. Here are the completed left squiggles and braids. There should be 5 total squiggles and 6 total braids. Leave all the stitches onto your circular needle or place them onto waste yarn. We're going to use a new circular needle to pick up and knit stitches along the right edge of section 1. This is the edge with all those yarn tails. Make sure those yarn tails are in back as you pick up and knit stitches from the right side. Use your main color to pick up and knit stitches starting down by the cast on edge of section 1. And we're going to pick up stitches in the same way as you did for the left edge. So here I'm going to show picking up stitches off of the brioche version. We'll start right here by picking up and knitting one and making one. Knit one and make one for the brioche version only. Pick up and knit one, make one for the brioche version only. If you're picking up off of the non-brioche moss stitch, ignore this make one. You're going to pick up and knit one stitch for every selvage stitch if you're doing the moss stitch version. For both versions of this pickup, pick up and knit one final stitch at the end of this row, and then we're going to slip the last three I-cord stitches onto your needle. Here are the three I-cord stitches, and with the purl bumps facing you, slide them onto the needle. And then you can remove the marker or waste yarn. You should have 102 total stitches on your needle. Turn to work the wrong side setup row, braid setup row. This braid setup row on the wrong side is very similar to the braid setup row that you did before for the left squiggles and braids. You'll knit three with main color, bring the yarn forward, and begin to purl one with the contrast color. And purl one with your main color. As you work this braid setup row, we're purling with the main color, purling with the contrast color, but don't do the twist like you did for the braids. Just let the yarns lay where they are. I like to purl one with my left hand and purl one with my right hand. Here is the end of braid setup row, wrong side. Purl one with contrast color, purl one with main color, and slip the last stitch with yarn in front. There should be 132 total stitches. Turn to work braid row one, right side. Using main color, pick up and knit two stitches from the edge. You can get any two strands of yarn. Pick up and knit them at the edge. Knit one more stitch with main color. Bring main color and contrast color forward to purl this row. Purl one with main color, place main color to the left, and bring contrast color up to purl. Now place contrast color to the left, and bring the main color up to purl. Purl one with contrast color, and leave it to the left, bring the main color up to purl, leave it to the left, contrast color comes up to purl. So this is the opposite twist to the left squiggles. Now we're leaving the yarn 
to the left and bringing the next color up to get the alternate twist. This is braid row two on the wrong side. Using main color, knit three. Place main color to the left on top of contrast color. Knit one with contrast. Place the contrast on top to the left. Knit one with main color. Place it to the left. Knit one with contrast color. Place it on top to the left. Knit one with main. Twist to the left. Knit one with contrast. Knit and do this twist all the way to the end of the row. The final special technique of section two is closing the short row gap on the wrong side of row 12. Knit to the gap, pick up a garter bump below the stitch you just knit, and slip slip knit the picked up stitch together with the next stitch to close the gap. Knit to the next short row gap, Here we're approaching the next short row gap, knit all the way to the gap, and pick up the garter bump below the stitch you just knit, slip it knitwise, slip the next stitch knitwise, knit those two together through the back loop to close the gap. Enjoy knitting the rest of section two.